As on from the first A-level results then coming out and more than 180,000 students still don't know if they've got a place at university. The admission service UCAS stayed open late last night to deal with the level of calls. Jane Prince is still trying to get a place. Morning, Jane. Morning. Tell us your situation then. What results did you get? What were your results? Where were you hoping to go to? What are you doing at the moment? Um, well, I was hoping to get two Bs and an A um, and go to Birmingham, but I actually got two Cs and a D. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the situation is that I didn't get my place at Birmingham and um, I'm not too keen on my second choices. Um, so at the moment I'm weighing up what I'm going to do next. How did you spend your day yesterday? Were you on the phone for much of the day? Yeah, I did ring the um, clearing line, obviously, and see um, what the situation was with my place at Birmingham. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get I didn't get through. Um, I did spend a lot of time on the phone as well, and then obviously ringing up friends and family to ask their advice too. Yeah, I mean, you say you're not very happy with your second choices. You must have known that there was a danger you wouldn't necessarily meet the grades that you were expecting or you wanted to get. So, did you have a plan yeah. B in place? I am. Um, to be honest, if I'm really honest with you, um, I was quite naive about my second choices. I didn't really put the research into looking around them or finding out if I really wanted to go there. I had my heart set on Birmingham, so I just didn't make a second plan, which was quite silly of me. Um, so my friends have sort of been consoling me, obviously, and um, just saying that there's other choices open to me. Um, so at the moment I'm thinking of doing a gap year and actually um, getting maybe some work experience or doing some teaching um, English and f as a foreign language um, and perhaps getting more experience and reapplying next year. Yeah, we well, appreciate your honesty, Jen, and I'm sure you're not the only person in that position, mm. actually, but stay yeah. with us because we've got the exams doctor with us, George Turnbull from the exams regulator in England, off qual. Hi, George. Uh, good morning. Uh, Jane presumably is not the only student who's not quite thought through what would happen if they didn't get the results they needed. No, that's uh, true, unfortunately, and in another year she probably would have got a place. I mean, it's good that she's been given an offer of a place, and I would have started uh, start this morning researching her other choices. Um, one of the pieces his advice is, uh, at the moment is to um, take um, insurance offers uh, if, if they're available. So um, don't just grab anything, but certainly research um, her other choices. Um, so she shouldn't perhaps. necessarily automatically dismiss perhaps taking up a place at university this year, presumably because next year we could be in a similar situation. Well, that's right. She didn't mention anything about uh, research if she's going to be having a gap year because she'll have the same grades next year as she has this year and the mm. competition is likely to be uh, greater. One of the downfalls with the research, in a sense, is, oh, yes, you can improve your grades, but some universities and very competitive courses are now being able to look twice at people taking research, and we prefer people to have uh, their A-levels at the first go. That's only in very competitive courses. But she needs to think all of these things through at the moment and persevere. This is another day. She needs to start again getting onto the phone and working out her options. Is there a case, it, rather than just settling for a university that she's not happy at, is there a case for c taking a year out, going and gaining some experience, boosting her CV that way? Well, only if she can add to her CV. She needs to really add value to it. She needs to consider and not put off uh, considering what she really wants to do at university and what um, sort of job she would uh, like to do in the future. If she was going in for medicine, for example, um, you know, she would need to do some hospital experience, some medical experience sure. to, to, to demonstrate that she really is interested in a medical career. Let me just get a final word from Jane, if I can. Is that useful, Jane? I mean, I, I'm aware that it's kind of very sensible advice. Don't bury your head in the, the sand on this one and also mm. be aware that next year you'll face just as tough, if not even tougher competition for places. Yeah, I think I'm quite keen to sort of um, expand my CV and just make that look a little better. And um, a friend of mine put me on to um, a really useful website, which was uh, notgoingtouni.co.uk. And that's really helped me to look at work placements that I could do, perhaps in something related to English, like journalism or, ex or um, teaching, for example. Yeah, OK, well, look, best of luck with what you do. Thanks very much for talking to us. Thanks Jane Prince. Much. And many thanks also to George Turnbull from the exams regulator Ofqual. 16 minutes.